So, I've been working a bit off screen because I need to get some things uh, straight in my mind. And uh, I haven't done too much. I fixed uh, a few small bugs and uh, and did some cleanup and and uh, now we support multiple expressions. But one thing I, I've been thinking about is how exactly does this uh, parser that we're using, parsing method, how does that work? It's called a, a Pratt parser after a guy called uh, whose last name was Pratt. And the way it works is it looks at two tokens at a time. And then it will pass one token and a bit code for that. And then depending on, it also receives a, an allowed precedence. And depending on whether the next operator, next token, uh, it should be an operator. And depending on whether, what the, the precedence of that is relative to the allowed level, you will either pass it or, or not. And I've been working a bit in, uh, in Obsidian actually, and this is my kind of way of thinking about it. So we have a precedence level and two tokens, which is passed into a passing function, which is this pass precedence. What you will do is you will emit code for the first token, and then you will check is the precedence of the ne next token higher than the current precedence level. If it's not, then you, you're done. You will return from this current function call and then the rest of the expression will be handled in a in a function call higher up. Uh, if it is, then you actually you have to pass that part of the token. Uh, th you have to pass more of the expression because that part of the expression has to be evaluated first before you can actually evaluate the thing you're currently passing. I hope it will make sense a little bit when I give a concrete example. Uh, anyway, so what you do is you look up a rule for passing that. Well, first, actually, over here, before you can emit code, you look up the rule for passing that first token. So there's, there's always this concept of looking up rules, which kind of looks like this. So depending on what the token is, is it a number, for example? Then we go in here in the rules, we look up the rule for the number, uh, and uh, then we use that. There's, there's like a bunch of things here, but we'll, we'll look at that a bit later. So if you look up the rule and then you take the two next tokens and you increment the precedence and then you, you go back here and start passing again. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's take an example. So for example, we have the following expression. Let me disable copilot. So what you'll do is you'll take one and plus and feed it into the parser. And the top level expression has always is supplied with the lowest level of precedence. So uh, let's say precedence is uh, lowest. So you will see that the first token is a number. So you go into the table, you look up the number, rules for the number, and this uh, structure has two things, three things. It has prefix, which is a rule. It's a function for passing a prefix. It has an infix, which is a function for passing something as an infix. Well, it will make sense. It's like, where is the token that you're currently looking at? Is it at the start of an expression or in between? in between tokens in the expression, then you'll use one or the other. Uh, and then there has a precedence for that. So anyway, go back here. We look up the number function. So I don't, don't know if you could hear that, but my, my dog was uh, scratching the wall. Okay, but anyway, we look up the number function, we call it, it will pass uh, well, it will just actually um, consume the token and emit bytecode for a number. Then we will look at the next token. 
which is this guy. And we will try to find, uh, we'll, we'll check the precedence. Is the precedence higher than the current one? Higher than or equal to? Since it's the lowest, it will, it will be yes. So what we're going to do is um, advance. So we kind of like consume that operator, I guess. So before we were looking at this token and this token, so we advance so that we're looking at this token and this token. If I may just... And then we look up the rule for this guy as an infix operator. So for example, we'll go into plus, we'll look up the rule. Okay, it's a binary operator. We call that function and that function will consume what's on the right, right hand side. Uh, and then we make bytecode. So the thing where it get gets more complicated is what if it looks like this? So the, the call to binary, it will be called with, um, well, let's have a look at it. So as you can see, it looks up the operator and it gets the rule. The rule is this struct here, pass rule. Uh, but right here in this call, it doesn't use any of the functions. It's only, it only does this to, to get the precedence. And what you do is you call recursively back into this pass function with a higher precedence. So we're calling it with the precedence of plus, the plus operator plus one. So it's everything that's that has to be evaluated before plus. So when it goes into this call, basically you're saying pass the right hand operator, right hand side of the operator. Then it it will pass everything that's higher than plus. So since multiplication is higher than plus, it will go in and pass that. So I hope that made a little bit sense, a little bit of sense. Let's see how it kind of works now. So we can write this uh, expression and currently it will, it will print what's on the top of the stack, if I'm not completely mistaken. And like this, this is what's on top of the stack. And it will also print out the, the bytecode that we construct, the disassembled bytecode. So if we, for example, do this, you can see we... Okay, so let's start with this one, actually. So when we pass that ex this expression, as I said, first we look at the number. And it will emit code for that. So that's just put in a constant. Then it will look at this guy and go in and um, pass it as a, an, uh, an infix operator. So it will call this binary thing. And what that will do is, is it will pass the, the next stream of tokens that have a higher precedence, and then it will emit code for the add operation. So, so here it will go and look at the right hand side and pass that. So it's just two in this case. So it will just load that constant too, uh, and then it will emit um, code for adding. And this operation return is always added at the end. So if we look at this expression first, it will say one. Let's make a constant equal to one. Then it will look at this guy and it will say, okay, for the next stream of tokens, pass everything that has higher precedence than plus. In this case is just, you know, we just get two. So we put in a constant. Um, well, we see the two. Okay, so we put in a constant of, of two here equals to two. Constant number one is equal to two. Then we see the next operator is plus. But plus doesn't have higher precedence than plus, so we just stop. Then we go back out to we were passing the plus. So we, we emit code for that. Then we're done with that. So we go back out again and uh, we see that there's a plus. So we go in and pass that. Okay, the right hand side has everything higher than precedence of plus. So we, we see that's the three, we make another constant two. There's nothing more, so we don't really care about the precedent actually. 
We're done with that right hand side, so then we emit the add operation. Okay, and just to see that, that okay, we need the semicolon, um, we can do this. So this should give 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, 7. So what you can see is first it will do this guy, load a constant equal to 1, then it will go into plus, try to get the right hand side if the, and pass everything that's higher precedence than plus, so it will see, okay, there's a multiplication, we have to pass everything, we have to pass the multiplication as well. So we see there's a constant, we load that too, there's a multiplication, okay, we do want that, it's higher than plus, so we look at the right hand side, it's a 3, we load in a constant, equals a 3, then we put in the multiplication, and then we put in, and then we're done with that right hand side of the plus, so we go back out, we, and we put in the, the add. Okay, so uh, a long story short, uh, this thing is called a Pratt parser. If you want to read more about it, Pratt parser. I guess I will put some some links in the description where you can read more about uh, Pratt parsing. Okay, so that's it for what I've been working on off screen. Just to have a little bit of code, let's think about values. So I think we already have a an alias for a value. Yeah, it's here in the virtual machine. And we want to expand upon that. We want to include also booleans and nil. And we can do that by using a union. So it's written like this. And we'll have a boolean value and a, a number again. Can we give it names? Well, maybe we don't have to do that. So first of all, let's see how badly it fails. Yeah, so it fails there. That's that's great. Okay, anyway, so let's make a couple of helper functions. Um, I wonder. Actually, you don't really need to do this. I think it's enough to just say, like you can just do this and then, let's try to compile it. It didn't give a new error, so I'm gonna assume that this is, this is all right. So now we support booleans and floating point numbers. But actually also we, we, we support nil because that's the default value of a union in Odin. We could, hmm, we could make a, a like nil, like a custom nil value, which would probably just be like an empty struct. So we can differentiate between this actually being nil and then we could even I think it's, it's like this that's not it maybe it goes here yeah and then this let's call this nil just because then we know when it's not been initialized. Well, now it, it will. If you make a default value, it would be nil because it, the default will then be the first one because I have this hashtag thing. But we could remove that and then we can distinguish between the value not being initialized and it being initialized to nil. So I think let's let's do that. And now we have something in in um, how we execute this thing. So let's have a look at that. Line 109 or something. 
Okay, so all of these things. Now. Yeah, so now we have a problem here. So I think I think we have to make separate fun. What did I just do? Anyway, I think we have to make separate functions for this stuff. So let's call it run add. It will take it will take What does this apply to? I kind of forgot about that. So let's think about how this thing could look. The problem is that if it gets values of the wrong type, it should uh, return a runtime error at this point. So So, 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 let's just try to write something. It doesn't return a value right now. We're just kind of like assuming we'll run it. Maybe it will look like this. And it will say A plus B. But here's the thing. Let's switch on the type of A. So if it's a pool, case pool. Okay, actually we have to say value of A in A, that's how you do it. So if it's a Boolean, then we do something. If it's an F64, we do something. If it is a uh, nil this no, we don't have it here we have it here so if it's this custom nil i don't know Let, let's let's not worry too much about this the default case is uninitialized so maybe maybe i just don't want to bother about that No, because I want to make sure you always initialize it. So maybe we just provide some functions, some like constructors, basically. And they are kind of silly. They just, you can see they're not really doing anything. So let's, I mean, they're just basically a typecast. So let's force them to be in line. And then we should never make a value on its own. So let's say no nil. So we can avoid that case there. Okay, so if it's A, then basically can I can I do this? And then let's comment that out. So and nothing else we're gonna say uh, close that one. So I guess let's say that it. Wh what type is this? It's an. No, what type is this? 
it's an interpret result. Let's say it returns an interpret result. Maybe. How do you do optionals in this language? I forgot. It's not like that. Anyway, so here we're going to return runtime error. And here we're just going to say this code and we'll return nil. I want to try to see if that works. So it definitely looks like it doesn't like that. Yeah, it doesn't like this multiple switch. Which is sad, but uh, let's... Because then I have to do something like this. Okay. And then, ah, okay, so now we can say val b, okay, is b.f64. I think that's how you do it. Uh, and then we can do this. Well, we can say if, if okay, do that. Otherwise, it's not a boolean. B is not bool. So at, uh, sorry, B is not F64. So at this point, we will just return a runtime error. And let's see if that compiles. Partial switch. But I have this which should match anything. Ah, okay, so that's a problem. And this one has to be like that. And here it thinks it's a field, so I, I do have to do that. Okay. Seems to be a problem here. We have to initialize it like that. And I thought this would be okay, but I guess it still sees it as a partial, so I'm going to put partial here for now. And now it's complaining about other things. So that seems to work. Let's now go here and we will say instead of this thing, we're going to say run add. And actually, let's say, let's make it a bit simpler actually. Let's say just returns for whether it's successful or not. Then if we go down here, we're gonna say, okay, is that? And if not okay, then we have to return a runtime error otherwise it's business as usual and basically we can do the same for for the other operations now it's never nice to copy paste
Because the only thing I'm changing is this. So we can say maybe it's we can do something like this and it has to take a procedure which is something that takes yeah what does it take hmm. problem is we don't have macros or compile time stuff So let's say if we have two two numbers, let's let's write let's call it numbers. So number number operation. Uh, it will have something that it runs in that case, and I suppose it has to return a number as well. But but you see, then we have to every single pair of things. Uh, uh, that's very annoying. So another another thing we could do is kind of a lookup table, but then we need a lookup table for each operator. I think even though it's not super nice for now, I'm going to be OK with this copy pasting so this is um, let's call it let's do multiplication now and let's do division and do we have anything left It's called subtraction. Okay, but now everything is working except for this negate thing. So let's get the current value, and then we're gonna say. Uh, let's get the float value like this. And if it is a float, then we can do push the negative of that. And otherwise, it's not defined. And I'm beginning to think it would be nice also to have a message here, but let's do that. later see if it runs it does kind of run let's do this and this still works but we don't really support um, passing these things yet so but uh, let's let's leave it here because already a long video uh, but basically now we support multiple value types and with that i will see you in the next one